Good morning, good morning, good morning. I have some big, big news coming out of Washington, D.C., out of the state of Maryland, as well as out of New York City. I'm going to be going through this. It's very early in the morning, and this news is big, so I'm up to keep you guys in the loop on what's really going on with President Trump, President Biden, the election, this crazy uh, ship running into a bridge, the court cases in New York, and much, much more. Thank you so much for joining me this evening, or this morning, excuse me. I'll go ahead and get jumped in. Uh, another radical left-leaning Trump-hating judge in New York is trying to silence Donald Trump. Joe Biden tells lies that are instantly fact-checked. Trump's lawyer hints that he will be suing New York and Attorney General Letitia James of New York City just as soon as he wins his appeal case. Plus, RFK Jr. announces his running mate and the Biden re-election team is absolutely losing their minds because of how many votes it's projected he will steal from Biden, thus giving Donald Trump even more opportunity to become president again. All right. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. During a Fox News interview, host Jesse Waters asked Trump's lawyer, Alina Habba, to comment on their recent win in New York City, where the bond amount was lowered by an appeals court from $454 million to only $175 million. Alina Habba stated, Letitia James had to eat every single tweet she has posted I hope she took a little piece of humble pie today because that's what was served to her. Just a little, but we'll be serving a lot more of that in the, in the next couple of years. To me, this sounds like Alina Habba is confident Donald Trump will win his appeal court case and then will likely be countersuing Attorney General Letitia James and the state of New York for dragging him and his business and his family through the mud and costing him nearly $20 million in legal fees. It's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to see it. Now, despite Donald Trump's win in New York, he still faces a major threat in New York. That's right. Donald Trump faces another 34 criminal counts relating to hush money he allegedly paid to cover up an affair with Stormy Daniels more than a decade ago. The exact charges relate to falsifying business records, which could land Trump in jail for four years. Essentially, they're mad that he uh, wrote these legal fees off with Michael Cohen off on his taxes. As expected, the judge is attempting to place a gag order on Donald Trump in order to prevent him from telling us what's really going on, speaking the truth, using freedom of speech, and yes, criticizing the judge for these outlandish claims. Now, why has every single court case against Donald Trump started with a crazy judge and attorney trying to silence him? Why don't they want Donald Trump to be able to speak? Why are they trying to take away his God-given freedom of speech rights? I want to hear from you guys in the chat. Why do you think that he is having every single court case begin with the judge trying to gag him, literally using the court's authority to force him to remain silent? It's crazy. Of course, we all know the answer. It's because they don't want him speaking the truth. Um, I see many of you are saying, good morning, Stephen. Good morning to you guys. Thank you so much for being with me on this big breaking news event. Now, uh, with that being said, the gag order from this judge did not stop Donald Trump from verbally attacking the judge. Trump stated Judge Juan Merchant, a very distinguished looking man, is nevertheless a true and certified Trump hater who suffers from a serious case of Trump derangement syndrome. 
In his defense, Trump did argue that this case could have been presented three years ago. To me, it does seem very strange that they waited until uh, less than a year before a presidential election. But again, we all know what is going on. The White House is coordinating with other Democrats in order to get Trump. Now, my guest, super lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, predicted all of this in his uh, book, Get Trump. And so it's all just playing out exactly as was predicted. They hate this man. They want him dead. They want to bankrupt him. They want to humiliate him and his family. And they want him in jail for 700 plus years. Now, of course, they waited for an election year because this case is about election interference, draining Donald Trump's financial resources and strength. And yes, keeping him from campaigning. Yet these lawsuits have only made Donald Trump more popular among the American people. This is a true rise in American populism where we the people want someone that represents us and not the Washington, D.C. establishment. We don't need more swamp candidates. There's plenty of them. They're a dime a dozen. What we want is somebody that looks out for the American people. Now, let me know in the comments, do you think Donald Trump looks out for the American people? Because I don't believe Joe Biden does. I don't believe Barack Obama does. I don't believe George W. Bush did. When was the last time since Ronald Reagan, that an American president actually looked out for the American people. Now, in other political news, RFK Jr. has finally announced his running mate, Nicole Shanahan, an attorney who was previously married to Google's co-founder, founder, Sergey Brin. While RFK will likely uh, be nominated as the libert libertarian nominee, it's still very unlikely that he can defeat uh, Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Now, with that being said, I do welcome the challenge as it actually helps Donald Trump get elected by taking votes away from Joe Biden. Most election analysts believe RFK Jr. running with Nicole Shanahan takes votes more votes away from Joe Biden than it does Donald Trump. Now, according to sources that wish to remain anonymous in the Joe Biden re-election camp, they are freaking out because all of the polling data is showing that this actually hurts Joe Biden and helps Donald Trump. Now, can RFK Jr. beat Donald Trump? I don't think he can, but I think he would be a great addition to Donald Trump's cabinet, maybe make him the attorney general like his father was before he was assassinated, maybe unleash him on Big Pharma and all of the other corporate captured entities in the government that are supposed to serve you and me, but instead serve their, their masters that only seek to enrich themselves. Now, earlier today, I was sent a video that made my heart drop over in Maryland, a 1.6 mile bridge collapsed after a cargo ship struck its foundation. The video is, is horrifying to watch. This bridge uh, was hit and immediately came down within seconds. Now, unfortunately, the bridge um, was under construction at the time of impact, which may have resulted in the deaths of uh, an unknown number of people from what, from what I'm reading, they believe at least six have passed away, sadly. With that being said, the ship did notify authorities before its crash, which allowed members of the public to remain safe. At this time, there's no evidence that this is a catastrophe that was deliberate. Rather, it was a ship that lost power. Now, um, after the, the accident, President Biden stepped in and vowed that the federal government will cover the entire cost of rebuilding this bridge for the state of Maryland. Uh, Biden stated, it's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through this port every single year, and we're going to get up and running as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on this port. 
And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. So not only was this a horrible tragedy uh, that lost lives and has now damaged the economy in this area, 15,000 people woke up this morning going, uh, wait a minute, do I have a job? What's going on? So hopefully they can get this fixed right away. Now, this is no small accident. Um, some are calling this a false flag or a black swan event. But honestly, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll continue to research it. But I will say this. Uh, th this is very suspicious. The captain of the boat says that the boat lost power. Yet, if you go back and look at the footage and you speed it up by 10x, 10 times as fast, you can actually see exhaust pouring out of the top of the boat. And then the boat maneuvering itself to run into the bridge footing, the big cement pylon that holds everything up. So if it ran out of power and was drifting, why did it suddenly regain power and then direct itself and ram into this footing? It's a little bit suspicious. So I, I mean, I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that this was a black swan event or a false flag like I'm seeing on the internet. But I saw with my own eyes this sped up video, which is showing this thing regaining power and then ramming right into this footing. I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think. It's pretty a little bit suspicious to me. Now, one thing I can tell you that did happen was President Joe Biden said how sad he was that this bridge collapsed because he had personally commuted over the bridge many times via train during his career. The only problem is this bridge doesn't have a train line. So this is a made up story by aging Grandpa Biden who couldn't remember the fact that he's never taken a train over this collapsed bridge. He literally makes these stories up in order to capture your empathy and gain your uh, affection, but they're lies. They're, they're absolute lies that were fact-checked in real time. The United States has finally defended uh, its decision to not vote at the United Nations Security Council in favor of Israel. Uh, the, the United Nations is saying, hey, this looks like genocide. We, we would like a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, initially, President Biden was criticized as backstabbing Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu. However, White House spokesman Admiral John Kirby defended Joe Biden by stating, we wanted to get to a place where we could support this resolution, but because the final text does not have key language that we think is essential, such as condemning Hamas, we couldn't support it. Though it does fairly reflect our view that a ceasefire and the release of hostages come together, we abstained from voting. So uh, they decided not to vote. Uh, Israel and Netanyahu feel backstabbed. They feel uh, betrayed by the United States. Now, even if this is true, one still can't ignore that Biden has turned his back on Benjamin Netanyahu. During a recent interview, Trump highlighted this fact by issuing a warning to Israel. Trump stated, I will say Israel has to be careful because you're losing uh, a lot of the world. You're losing a lot of support. You have to finish up. You have to get the job done. So basically, Trump is saying, listen, Israel, we support you in taking out Hamas, but we don't necessarily support what you're doing in Gaza but you better hurry up because you are losing support, the world support, the United States support. And so Israel needs to do this and they need to do it correctly. Even the United Nations is on the verge of turning on Israel. And it does appear that Joe Biden is now saying to Benjamin Netanyahu, we do not support you. And, and we're, we're not even going to vote with the United Nations on your behalf. Now, over in Russia, Vladimir Putin is still doing damage control by claiming his enemies were partly responsible for the recent terror attack, meaning Ukraine. One of the evidence uh, that he is alleging is that the terrorists were running away to Ukraine when they were captured. However, Belarusian President 
uh, Alexander Lukashenko debunked this claim by asserting that they were headed to Belarus, not Ukraine. While it is true that the attackers did flee to Ukraine, they only did so after they realized that Belarus has a significant uh, border and that that border is really, really secure. <laughs> they must have thought that they were running to the United States southern border, which is not secure, but absolutely needs to be secure. So this is part of why Putin is saying that this may have been an attack uh, orchestrated and supported by Ukraine, but the evidence points that to this being more about ISIS and less about Ukraine. Russia has also extended the detention of Evan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter who has been arrested and jailed for being a spy. Now, nobody believes that Gershkovich is an American spy. They believe that he is an American journalist. Uh, during Tucker Carlson's interview with Vladimir Putin back in December, Putin did tell him that they are hoping to swap him out for other prisoners very soon. And let's hope that that is the case. We need to get this American journalist back to the United States of America. Okay, now former head of the RNC, Rona McDaniel Romney, was essentially fired from the RNC and replaced by Laura Trump and other MAGA Republicans. She then took a job over at NBC News where she has already been fired. NBC employees literally had a come apart, a mind meltdown. They lost their minds for her being hired because they prefer to be a liberal left-leaning media outlet that pretends to be unbiased. But when it comes to Rona McDaniel being a top Republican, they said, no way. If she works here, we are all quitting. And so Rona McDaniel's has been fired from the RNC, and now she has been fired from NBC News. All right, now this is my early morning update. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Give this video a like because it tells YouTube to push it out. Also, subscribe to this because I want you in my community of 1.6 million amazing truth seekers. We're trying to get to 1.6 million. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hey, thank you guys so much. I love you. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you on the next video.